Here's a question that Potterheads couldn't help but obsess over and debate on. Was Harry Potter really meant to be in Gryffindor? We all know that his loyalty and bravery secured him a spot in the Red and Gold House, to the point that he was presented with a sort of Godric Gryffindor in his time of need. But let's not forget how he got so close to getting sorted into Slytherin that he practically had to plead his way out of it. Even Dumbledore admits that Harry would have fit right in in this often misunderstood house. Besides, it's not like this is the only questionable decision the Sorting Hat has ever made. Like, wouldn't Hermione have done better in the grossly underrated Ravenclaw? And let's talk about Neville for a second, okay? Surely we're not the only ones who think he gives off strong Hufflepuff vibes. So, what about Harry then? Didn't the Sorting Hat insist that he'd do well in the Green and Silver House? How different would the series have been if the Sorting Hat just stuck to its decision and placed Harry in Slytherin! Welcome to The Bestest, the channel that provides you the bestest news and videos you should know about. On this episode, we are exploring an alternate universe where Harry Potter gets sorted into Slytherin. Before we start, make sure to like and subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell for more amazing videos. During one of his usual pep talks for Harry, Dumbledore explained that more than our abilities, it's our choices that show what we truly are. Okay, we get that, but all it really tells us is Harry only got into Gryffindor because he was predisposed to dislike Slytherin. Even before he stepped foot in Hogwarts, his perception of Slytherin had already been tainted thanks to Hagrid, Draco, and Ron. If this hadn't been the case, it's likely that Harry would have been in the same house as the man who gave him that lightning scar. Let's take this fan theory for a spin and see how it would have panned out. In Harry Potter and the Philosopher's or Sorcerer's Stone, Despite Harry's pleas, the Sorting Hat knows that his dislike for something he doesn't fully understand shouldn't get in the way of him discovering his true potential. He would get sorted into Slytherin and their table would erupt as the boy who lived makes his way to them. But there's one Slytherin who wouldn't be too happy about this, Draco Malfoy. When they get in the common room, Draco would try to establish his authority and embarrass Harry in front of the others, saying something along the lines of, Bet you loved that, didn't you, Potter? Famous Harry Potter. Can't even get sorted into a house without making the front page. Wait till my father hears about this. You best not embarrass this house, Potter. Associating with a blood traitor, Weasley, and filthy mudblood cringer. They're an insult to the wizarding world, all of them. The relationship between Snape and Harry would also be more complicated, as if it weren't already complicated enough, right? But because he wasn't sorted into the same house as his dad, Harry would receive a less severe treatment from Snape. The obvious disdain would still be there, just, you know, maybe he'd dial down a bit on taking points off of him. As for Quidditch, it's likely that Harry would still make it to the team. After McGonagall sees Harry die for Neville's remembrance, we just know that she's the type of person who would tell her fellow professors about it. After learning about this, Snape would punish Harry for challenging another Slytherin, but he would put Harry in the team nonetheless. Harry would also likely have a different group of friends, many of whom would only stick with him because of his history with Voldemort or because he's the rich chosen one. He'd still try to talk to Ron occasionally, but the long-running tension between the two houses would get in the way of their friendship. Harry would end up exploring Hogwarts alone at night, which means he's still likely to find the mirror of Harry's set. Without Ron's familiarity with the wizarding world and Hermione's wisdom, they'd have never learned about the Philosopher's Stone or Voldemort's plans to take it. This means nobody would be going after Quirrell as he tries to retrieve the stone for you-know-who. 
but that doesn't mean he'd get away with it. Because of his evil intentions for using it, Quirrell wouldn't be able to get the stone from the mirror of Ares' head. And while he may not have succeeded here, he'd be able to come back to Hogwarts for another term, making him the first defense against the dark arts teacher to last more than one year. And that is when he'd be able to please his master hiding under his turban. In the second installment of the series, with Quirrell still alive and able to do Voldemort's bidding, they're probably gonna have to think of a new title for this book. Voldemort can focus on his diary plan. With Voldemort still attached to his head, Quirrell would find the diary. His life force and whatever's left of Voldemort's soul would be transferred into the young Tom Riddle. No more Ginny getting involved, no more chamber getting opened. It would also be a rather unhappy ending for Dubby, who wouldn't have to try and save Harry's life and, in turn, wouldn't have a friend who would try to set him free from the Malfoys. No more flying car adventures too for Harry and the Weasleys, which is good for Harry because that would have just made it far too easy for Snape to expel him now that Harry's under his house. And the worst part is, Voldemort would rise again and the body of Riddle now fully restored. He can start rebuilding his forces inside Hogwarts and people wouldn't even notice. They would likely notice that Quirrell has gone missing, but they just chalk it up to the Defense Against the Dark Arts curse. By this time, Ron and Hermione will have become friends already, so Hermione would keep pestering Ron to check on Harry when she notices that his car keeps hurting. This is when the trio's friendship will slowly begin. Their sophomore year would end without too much adventure, but the Dark Lord would be very much alive and powerful again. In Prisoner of Azkaban, Harry, Ron, and Hermione would already be friends but not as tight-knit as we know them to be. It hasn't really gotten to a point where Harry would be close to the Weasleys yet, so the twins wouldn't have entrusted him with the Marauder's Map. Harry wouldn't have spotted Pettigrew on the map and everyone would have continued to believe he was dead. Everyone except Sirius Black, who after seeing Scabbers on the Daily Prophet would break out of Azkaban. He'd inevitably cross paths with Lupin and the two would sort things out between them. Without Harry, Ron, and Hermione in the picture, the two would be able to find Scabbers and kill the traitor Peter Pettigrew. Sirius Black would be a free man. Cornelius Fudge, of course, would take advantage of the situation and declare that he'd known all along that Sirius was innocent or, you know, something like that. It would be overwhelming for Harry, who had spent a lot of time hating this man. But now that he's free, this also means he can now have a guardian who actually cares about him. But while it all works out for Sirius, Buckbeak wouldn't be as lucky, because the trio wouldn't have to intervene and free him. Poor Hagrid. And although Pettigrew would no longer be around to revive Voldemort, the Dark Lord wouldn't mind because he's already returned to power last year and, at this point, would have already rounded up his most loyal followers. Man, doesn't this fanfic deserve a movie series of its own? What other things do you think would have happened to the first three books had Harry been a Slytherin? Let us know in the comment section below and watch out for part 2 to see what would happen in books 4 to 7. If you enjoyed watching this, you're also going to want to check out our other videos as we answer your most intriguing what-ifs, like this video on the Top 10 Anime Fusion crossovers. Don't forget to like and subscribe to The Bestest and make sure to hit the bell to access more of our videos. Thank you so much for watching and until our next Bestest video.